Okay. So this is a, um, just to put some faces to various people, if you join different calls, you're going to hear voices. These are some of our work stream leaders. Um, there is uh, Anand who does uh, Omnichannel, he's a leader of Omnichannel. Antonio Sanch Quadra Sanchez is on uh, Customer Experience Management Use Cases and in Implementation Guide. Mark Gear from Huawei, CEM, and Internet of Everything. Jörg Nimoller um, for 360-degree view of the customer. Rohit Batra on Big Data Analytics. That's me. That's our, our VP. Robert Bertulik uh, on, in charge of metrics. Apple uh, Lee from Huawei in charge of uh, data processes, data governance. Gadi from Amdocs on Analytics Big Data Repository and Abhinash Vishwakarma from um, Netcracker on Customer Experience Integrator. What we're going to cover is as a, an introduction. What does it mean to get involved? Why should you get involved? What are we working on? And how do you get involved? One of the big things that we do in our uh, work in, at TM Forum is to develop common language. So we've put it in through an euphemism of a football as, as America knows it and football as the rest of the world knows it. Um, as obvious as it seems, sometimes we don't have common language to, to speak the same, uh, speak about the same thing, which leads in in delays, misunderstandings, missteps, so on, and in an interconnected world, developing this common language is even more vital. We do this through collaboration. Uh, we are a forum of for the members, by the members, and of the members. Members collaborate to come up with common um, um, foundational uh, material and assets and common language, which is of use for every member company. So we, we do this, we do all of this de development and collaboration through a virtual meeting place, uh, uh, through, the, through weekly meetings, and we also meet occasionally, physically, I will explain to you what physical meeting place is all about, um, and what we do is we develop guides, best practices, reference models, processes, architectures and we take on next generation ideas in the age of uh, open digital environment, uh, smart X applications, network virtualization, and so on. Our collaboration, as I had said a couple of slides ago, is both physical and virtual. So in the physical, uh, we, we have what are called action days and action weeks. Virtual, we have online communities to, to, to discuss uh, topics of interest, and we also have conference calls, weekly conference calls on particular topics to progress our common ideas. Um, as a member, you are free to participate in any and all of these. You can work at any level of commitment that works for you. We go through collaboration, which leads to consensus, and ultimately creates fun foundational material for uh, you to use in your company. We have two kinds of projects that we run, collaboration projects, which are published twice a year, and the, these collaboration projects are uh, open to all members uh, who have joined the project. They are free, and um, the, the work is done in developing this material, which is published twice a year, through those uh, weekly calls, the action days, action weeks that I uh, alluded to a slide earlier. We also have another kind of project, which is called Catalyst Projects. These are short-term proof of de uh, concept demos. Um, typically, a, a champion or solution provider uh, would uh, uh, state a problem of a of a next gen type of of situation where they they have, they they see a problem or they foresee a problem uh, they'd like to solve the problem and multiple companies get together this is a pay to participate these demos are uh, 
uh, showcased twice a year in, in events which are um, the flagship event that we host is in Nice in the summer and then we have one in, in the, towards the end of the year which this year will be in um, Singapore and in Dallas. Our program, which is called the Customer Centricity, Customer Centricity Program, consists of Customer Experience Management Project, Big Data Analytics Project, and Metrics Project. There are three distinct separate projects. Each of these projects have various work streams under them, and I will talk to you about those work streams uh, uh, in a little bit. Um, what we use as our over, overarching motivation is uh, using customer experience as a differentiator, propelling business success with analytics, and making the, the in the increased connectivity and virtual world, uh, how to remain customer centric. These are our uh, driving principles. Some of the types of challenges that we try to answer is how can I right channel or omni channel my experiences such so that I create an Amazon or an Uber type of experience? How do I know if my CEM program is working from a customer's perspective? Um, how can I do data analytics faster, cheaper, better? How do I create a metrics or a data driven culture? How do I become more citizen centric in my any smart applications such as smart city. So to give you a good understanding of where we operate and where we do not operate, uh, if you look at this pyramid, and uh, we're calling it a hierarchy of needs, you have at the lower end the, uh, of the pyramid, you have common challenges which are to do with um, infrastructure and enablement, security and privacy, um, customer data centricity. These are common challenges. They are not specific to any company's brand or uh, product or uh, their strategy, their design, um, and so on. So anything that is in, in the differentiators of a company, they are your proprietary information. We do not uh, delve in that. We do not discuss that. We do not uh, want to know about it. What we do discuss is what is of common interest, which is foundational, um, which is in the lower half of this pyramid. Our collaboration projects, as I said, we, we deliver them twice a year. Um, the the uh, what we we publish publish and uh, twice a year. So the two cycles, one goes from January to June, the other goes from July to December. Um, so if you look at this cycle, this current cycle, we, 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 we did a release in June. We started working on our next cycle of, of uh, stuff that we want to publish in July. Uh, early in that cycle, we had an action week, which was in uh, Vancouver. This is when a member companies come face to face to uh, finalize um, and um, cast in, in more definitive terms the scope of what it is that we are going to work on. Thereafter, everybody goes back to their respective uh, places. We continue with weekly virtual meetings and we, uh, we will produce uh, a set of deliverables which will be released in December and then this cycle will repeat, repeat itself. Now why should you be interested in all of this? Why should you participate? Because it gives you an avenue for thought leadership. It gives you the ability to hear other people's viewpoints and gain ex expertise. You can develop close working relationships with, with like-minded folks who are outside of your own company. You can tackle big challenges. You can influence the direction that these challenges take and you are therefore part of a virtual R&D which, um, uh, which you could find very uh, fruitful and gratifying and maybe even solving some of your immediate needs. 
from a personal development point of view, uh, also this is this is good because it increases your knowledge of the state of art. You become a thought leader. You broaden your knowledge. Um, you get to network with uh, some great minds in the industry. Um, you get the opportunity to exercise, uh, you know, group dynamics in a virtual world and public speaking. There are leadership opportunities. Um, over and above what you do in your own company and it gives you an avenue for personal uh, networking. People who do attend Action Week and not every participating member does attend but those who do attend they find it a very very positive experience in terms of being able to understand and uh, network with uh, your peers in other companies. So now I have told you about uh, why this is gainful for you. So let me go into the first of our projects, customer experience management. And, and quickly want to share with you that customer experience management um, is very important because this was a, a survey that was done where uh, folks were asked, what are your top challenges? Um, they said getting a holistic view of the customer, understanding the customer's needs, uh, understanding, providing responsive support, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, in the in the very complicated uh, world of of interconnectivity, this is becoming even more key because companies are uh, finding it more and more difficult to have the customer experience be something that is wholesome and holistic and and in, which increases uh, the customer's loyalty and makes your brand become that much more stable. So customer experience management is becoming the name of the game as the uh, internet of everything makes the world more complex. Our driving principle in this is that thus far companies have been producing products and services which we call an outside in view. Um, um, I'm sorry, an inside out view. Um, the, the inside out view is it, from inside the company, this is what we want to produce, this is what we think we can produce and, and therefore we, we give it to the customer. Of course, you've done some some amount of rationalization of research that it's needed but it's pretty much we want we can produce it so we are giving it to you in in this the driving principle in this project is to take an outside in view always asking how does this impact the customer how is it that the customer is going to view this and is it going to add to his um, to his uh, you know one more thing to take care of or is it are going to be that you completely delight the customer. That is our driving principle. The assets that we have in, in through our past cycles of, of twice a year delivery, we have a full customer experience uh, management solution suite which consists of a guidebook, a life cycle model, over 550 metrics, a maturity model, and a return on investment calculator. We also have a, a guidebook on omni-channel best practices uh, consisting of a maturity model, requirements, uh, common language on channel and sub-channel definitions, um, a functional architecture, and uh, 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 we are now doing data, working on data analytics um, that are needed for, for fulfilling these requirements. We have a 360 degree view of a customer which actually takes the life cycle model and uh, puts, rounds it off with uh, analytics, uh, uh, events, just sentiment, um, trying to understand customer sentiment, personas and so on. We have use cases which are really business cases of how you can um, if you were to set up a customer experience department, what are some of the few uh, high notes that you need to hit? Um, and there is an implementation guide which goes with it, which says which, how do you give priority to which of these business use cases you uh, incorporate first and then second and third and so on. 
this is a pictorial view of, of what we have, our life cycle model right at the center here, as I said, 360 degree view. The model is made up of, of, a, of, a, of a journey experience life cycle uh, with a 360 round off with events, channels, and analytics leading to insight and knowledge. We have the return on investment calculator, we have a maturity model, the metrics, omni-channel, and uh, this new work which is called the experience integrator, um, a whole new idea of a business opportunity for service providers to actually be the, the single point for a customer to experience any product or service in a complex uh, IOE environment. The use cases, the business use cases I was, I was talking about earlier, here's a snapshot of some of the types of use cases we have. I'm just going to read them off. Increase service assurance, I mean service awareness, how to encourage dialogue with the customer, create a single per customer uh, experience index, small to medium business sales interaction, personalized offering across customer life cycle, et cetera. Each of these use cases gives you um, the, the business rationale for doing it, the kind of inputs you need, the kind of partners you need, what are the expenses that you will have to uh, go through, what are the metrics to track, whether it is, it is a successful uh, initiative you've undertaken, um, what kind of revenues, additional revenue streams you can expect from them. The implementation guide that goes with those use cases is um, is about how do you um, how uh, what is the basis on which you prioritize which use cases you you consider first and second. Um, we are currently that that uh, particular implementation guide is currently being enhanced using an enterprise business architecture led considerations with stakeholder analysis to understand uh, how to uh, set up your CEM practice or CEM department. The return on investment calculator is about um, figuring out, with, with given a particular use case, what, what is the expected return you can get from that expense that you're putting in. 550 plus metrics, as I had said, uh, they can cover the entire life cycle and they are a handy guide of, um, you know, KPIs that you can choose from to uh, start your CEM department. In Omnichannel, we uh, currently have imperatives of Omnichannel, uh, functional capabilities of Omnichannel, a maturity model, requirements, and a reference architecture. What we are planning to do uh, in the upcoming cycles is uh, upgrade the maturity model. Um, then we are doing this uh, analytics for Omni. We are upgrading the requirements to uh, map with the functional architecture um, and we are moving from making all of these assets move from being a communication service provider to a generic uh, digital service provider. The experience life cycle model, I had alluded it to it in, in an earlier um, slide where I was showing you uh, all of our assets. This is a bigger view of the same thing. As I said, there is not only just the journey um, that, that is talked about, but it is also rounded off with um, analytics towards getting insight and knowledge uh, triggered by experience events and dependent on channels and sub-channels. Uh, more on the analytics. This is another unique effort that we are trying to do in, in, in understanding the customers um, outside in view. Uh, today, the, the two uh, main um, indicators of customer satisfaction are Net Promoter Score and CSAT. 
uh, we are trying to define other objective ways of um, measuring what the customer's satisfaction is and what therefore what the customer experience scores should be. These are some of the areas that we are uh, working on and right now as we speak in Stockholm there are two action days that are going on today and tomorrow where this is being worked on by members, this particular area. This is the other area that we are working on in these two action days in Stockholm. It's the experience integrator. Um, so we, what we are saying is that um, about uh, five years ago, uh, everything that was available online was what was called fragmented. Every company had its own offerings in, in, in maybe in a retail and also online. Uh, about uh, five to five to seven years ago, there were companies uh, such as Orbitz or Kayak or Hotels.com or whatever you who started aggregating some of this. But there was a problem with this aggregation is that it did not necessarily um, take the customer's experience uh, across the entire life cycle, nor did it include every partner that a certain uh, service might might require. So what we are proposing is this integrated which is enabled through the IOE supported by open systems with dynamic business partnering uh, models. So this is these are the questions that we are trying to answer through this integrated model. Who should I contact for my services? Who will manage so many connected devices? Who will keep me informed? Uh, who should I contact for all of my services, etc. So um, this is a, a new business opportunity that we are trying to put down a common framework for. I think I have already talked through this customer sentiment, experience integrator and, exp and the scores. This is what we are working on right now for the rest of this year. And that brings me to the end of customer experience management. I'll pause for uh, just a little bit to see if anybody has any questions. Hi, Snigna. This is uh, Macho. Now yes. it sounds, you know, quite um, high. Uh, no, I well understood, and thanks for the explanation. It was very clear. All the documents you you mentioned on the uh, CEM uh, are on the uh, CM Forum website, I reckon, right? That's correct, yes. Yes. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. great. Okay. Great. Okay. All right, so uh, let me go into data analytics. Again, I start with a survey that we did where we said, what is data analytics important for? Um, and we find that network management, again, customer support, uh, personalized offer, um, churn prevention, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. There are very many different areas where customer, uh, not I'm sorry, data is is really important, and uh, there are many areas of data analytics which which are partially explored or uh, not at all explored that we constantly keep looking at in our quest to make companies more data centric and more uh, capable of becoming uh, more mature in their data analytics. In most data analytics as we as we find today, they are siloed and non-standard. Companies do have data analytics platforms, tools, uh, reporting capabilities, uh, mining capabilities, but departments use them in a siloed and non-standard way. Um, the, uh, so companies are not necessarily seeing the, the best bang for their buck uh, as far as data analytics is concerned. We, our driving principle is to take a proactive cross-organization business-driven approach. What we have developed so far is a guidebook, um, a business value roadmap, maturity model, use cases, uh, a reference architecture, and building blocks. Uh, we are working on a, an agile method 
to create a data lake of covering all OSS, BSS data entities. That's called the Analytics Big Data Repository. We also have a data monetization introductory guide. Uh, there are uh, there's a great number of uh, metrics that are defined around uh, analytics, and uh, we have processes and governance also defined. Pictorial view, this is what our reference model looks like. Uh, we have 70 plus use cases, monetization, the data lake, maturity model, building blocks. Um, the processes that we have are in, in line with the, the processes that are um, in ETOM. Uh, so these are data analytics processes that go hand in hand with the processes of, um, of uh, across uh, any uh, service provider. Uh, this is still work in progress. We have processes in certain domains uh, for analytics. We do not have in others. They are, they are being worked on. And so uh, that's where that is at. This roadmap I'm going to skip because this is, is, is a little bit old and it may not apply to you right now, so I'm going to skip this. We have a maturity model uh, for, for analytics, which is being uh, augmented in this cycle with an automated toolkit for assessing where there might be gaps and in, in your organization and how you can fill those gaps. This is some use cases, examples of use cases that we have. So I'm going to read right down the, the middle here. Um, churn risk pred uh, prediction for customer retention, uh, personalized offers for customer retention, uh, increase effectiveness of customer self-service. There are a whole lot of use cases that uh, use um, data analytics. And again, like in the CEM use cases, they give you what is the business rationale for, for that uh, use case, who are the partners, what kind of KPIs you need, what are the, um, what's the expense structure looking like, what kind of revenue flows you can expect from incorporating the use case. The Agile Data Lake, which is the big data repository, uh, consists of data entities which are um, one level below what is in our uh, flagship uh, SID uh, information model. Um, they are, it is a uh, data dictionary of all OSS and BSS data. And here is an example of one of them. So what are we working on? Uh, we are working on uh, data analytics processes, new use cases, the automated toolkit, uh, the OSS BSS repository, uh, fraud analytics, um, and we are working on NFV, uh, SDN, um, you, analytics, data in the world of IOE, uh, improving processes, and so on. The data monetization introductory guide that we have, we are not working on this now. This has been complete for a while, and we have not had any further uh, member interest in developing further. But what we do have is a reference model, all kinds of privacy, security considerations, best practices, for different sectors and 12 use cases. So for example, there's public transportation services optimization, uh, retail branch outdoor analytics, customized healthcare checks, etc. So this is very interesting for a company that wants to externally monetize its data. This is uh, an area of work that uh, is, is, is still aspirational, um, where we want to be working in a, 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 the, making the customer at the center of a virtual ecosystem. Um, there is a considerable amount of work that is being done by the Internet of Everything group. Um, aspirationally, we haven't yet engaged with them. We are looking for 
uh, enough member interest to start doing this work. And that was the end of data analytics. Uh, any questions? Hi, Snake. This is uh, Macho here. Yeah. Um, what, one, one question. Um, you know, having worked myself for a very long time, actually all of my life in telecommunications, and joined an analytics company a couple of years ago, SaaS mm -hmm. that is. But I, you know, if I, every time I look at the Eton model, which is, you know, one of the frameworks heavily used by TM Forum and its members. Um, it is always very difficult for me, but everybody else working with it, to actually pinpoint where analytics comes in. I once literally had a question coming from an enterprise architect of a large cable operator here in Europe. Mm -hmm. And the guy asked, you know, where can I put your domain that is the domain of analytics? And I said, well, you know, literally, it's in the ETO model, it's everywhere. On, in all dimensions, you can use analytics. And he concluded, if it's everywhere, it is thus nowhere. Mm. You know, we know there's an area of billing or CRM or problem handling, et cetera, et cetera. But analytics is literally all over the place. Mm. My question is, have you ever considered of sort of redesigning the model as data becomes, and thus also analytics, becomes more important for telco operators to sort of reconsider the model in terms of where analytics should be basically, you know, comes in. Do you understand where, where I'm coming from? Because yeah, it's, I know you know, it's now a bit all over the place. So because I, I basically would argue that uh, um, in the end, if, if you compare also in terms of CEM, you know, would like telecom operators to learn from their, you know, OTT competitors or colleagues or whatever you call it, like, you know, Airbnb, Uber, etc. These parties start with data. They start with the data coming out of the processes and constantly optimize via analytics what they do. Right. So they start, you know, like a telecom operator would start with a network, they would start with the customer data or data coming from any source. Right. So it's you know it's completely almost you know upside down. So right. basically, I'm I'm looking where you know we as telecom sector can learn from these companies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's something that's very interesting, Matthew. I'm glad you you said that because what what I'm here I hear from members is is somewhat similar. Um, you know, relatively new companies are um, able to um, be digital natives easily, right, because that's where they started. Older companies have legacy uh, systems to worry about and are therefore it's not that easy for them to pivot and become digital natives. And, you know, it's it's sort of the same thing like, you know, when, when uh, first uh, mobile technology was introduced, countries which did not have good um, fixed line um, systems to begin with were able to jump into the mobile technology quicker, faster, right, than the ones who had yeah. legacy things to worry about. So it's, it's sort of similar, and so if, if you look at this thing that, that, I'm, that I'm showing here, that is exactly the point that this, this particular, um, uh, you know, taking each of the domains from ETOM, you know, and actually mm -hmm. providing what is the data analytics that is needed, you know, at the each domain level. Uh, part of this work has been done, part has not been done. So if this is something that you are interested in, uh, on Mondays we have a call, uh, the, Apple is the leader of this particular thing. She would be delighted to have more participation because I think that the point you made, if that data analytics is everywhere, it's nowhere, is a very relevant point. Um, we don't want it that it's nowhere. We implicitly yeah. know that every process could could gain from having analytics in it. The challenge becomes, are you going to drown yourself in analytics, you know, because there is that yeah. kind of a big morass of data. So extracting something like what 
Apple has started doing here is I think a very fruitful exercise. Um, if you look at the data analytics calendar, it's, it's a Monday call. It's on every Monday. Okay. Yeah, and if you right. join that, this will that'll be something that that would be very interesting for you and for her. She'll okay. be happy to. Great. Yeah. Okay. So let me go into metrics. This uh, so metrics is uh, the team that we have in metrics today is is really focused on uh, getting input from various uh, you know contributing members. There is a fairly rigorous def way of defining and ingesting metrics into the metrics uh, database. Um, it, it's, it's rigorous to the extent that um, the dimensions and the wording is, is sanitized thoroughly. Uh, so for example, um, problem ticket or or uh, severity ticket or trouble ticket you know which might all really mean the same thing are are carefully analyzed and sanitized the parameters for it are uh, um, are are uh, kind of uh, defined well if they are calculated um, values then the uh, the variables of the calculation are also defined you know to its most atomic level at this stage we have about 2100 metrics um, of which uh, there is about uh, 105 which are called customer experience business scorecard uh, we have uh, BSS metrics, so we have network virtualization, SLA management, and then this one which is called Craig Farrell metrics is from a book by a gentleman from IBM named Craig Farrell who created ideas from where we extracted metrics, you know, there's a, almost 700 of them which are relevant across IT and operations and network management and so on. One very interesting thing we are doing in this in this cycle, and it should be out in December, is discontinuing this particular poster that we have of the business metrics and creating a poster which looks exactly the same as the domains of ETOM and SID. So we go, we are going to have classifications of metrics in the customer domain and in the product and service domain and in the enterprise domain, so that every Everybody who's working on a process from eTerm uh, and a process domain will also see the entities, will be able to also see the related KPIs, in the metrics. So we are coming up with a fourth member in the uh, eTerm SID TAM family. It's going to be the metrics poster. This is what something of what our database looks like. Um, there's a maturity level. There's a name. We have three three different categories that that we can uh, classify any given uh, metric in, and uh, this acts as a way that people can filter if they want to say look at all uh, corporate management metrics. They can filter on corporate management and get all the metrics. Um, so we have a, quite a rich set of metrics. Um, I'm not going to go into the details of this, but we have a fairly robust and complex way of taking input from various sources to ingest them into our metrics database. Um, we ask all members to start to contribute to metrics. The more metrics that are defined, the better better off we will be. Um, right now, we have also had got recently a, a an agreement with Quest uh, or, or QWEST as it's called uh, which is a standards body um, and we are the uh, the body of choice where all metrics to do with network virtualization is going to reside so all of the Quest metrics are also going to be residing with us. Um, so much for metrics. Now I'm going to talk about how you can join the projects. Um, so you are you this initial part of registering yourself. I know you've already done; otherwise, you wouldn't have received this email. 
you can click on the projects, uh, data analytics or customer experience and metrics. Um, and once you join uh, the project, you will get approved to join the project by your company. You open the calendar uh, for that particular project, accept the invite of whichever topics you are uh, interested in, start joining the calls, and you know, you're going to have some fun. Uh, your average uh, commitment would be about an hour to hour and a half per week. If you ever decide to become a leader, you will uh, have up to a peak of about eight hours a week, um, but that'll happen in bursts and not continuously. Um, so the, just the details of those steps, first you, you register, then you drop down on this, hover over this collaborative R&D, and you click on join a project. Once you've clicked on join a project, you're going to get your, I, your, your company's IP contact will give clearance, which is to basically to say that yes, this person is a bona fide member of our company and is okay to join this project. Once you've done that, um, you will have access to our online uh, wiki, which is where we do all our work. The online wiki is projects.tmforum.org. If you drop down on this thing called spaces, you'll see something called space directory, where you'll be able to find these projects. You click on them, and uh, you will have access to it. So as an example, I open this one up, the customer experience. Once you open it up, there's a calendar. You can op click open the calendar and uh, uh, click on any, any of the weekly calls that interest you, join them. You should also read this Getting Started tab, which is going to give you a lot of information of you know, what you should know and the, the entire uh, background and the panorama of all that is going on. Most of the work that we do is is a you know uh, all documented in in this because it's a wiki everything is documented online and it's usually in the work in progress area. Here's another one work in progress, and here's a list of all the calls that we have. Um, and but you know this is just an information only slide. Um, the actual call details, you should go on to the calendar on projects.tmforum.org and uh, download from there. And so you're welcome to join any of our uh, um, projects. Uh, and we always welcome, you know, the, the more member participation we have, the, the richer everything becomes and it's a win-win for everybody all around. That's pretty much uh, the end of my spiel. Are there any more questions? So I have heard from Matthew a little bit. I have not heard from Tobias. Tobias, are you there? Uh, yeah, I'm here. Okay, so... Which company do you belong to, Tobias? Um, CGI. It's an IT consulting company, and so yeah, it was interesting to see the different aspects and how you um, use your model. That's great. Um, so, Tobias, can you put your uh, your email ID into this uh, into the chat box? Because uh, yeah, of course. I'll be sending a recording out of of this. Okay. How about Abigas? Are you there, Abigas? I hope I'm pronouncing I'm your name here. correctly. Hi. Um, yeah, yeah. Did you find this useful? Yeah, it's very important, and uh, uh, I think uh, uh, it's uh, better for me if you send me. I will send you my email also, and you send me the recording, and uh, I need to dig deeper, more resources, I think. Right. Uh, right, okay. So, uh, generally it was very interesting and your presentation was uh, very
Well, thank you. Let me just quickly show you. So if you, or Abigas, also put your I email I in, will, yeah, I in the chat window. If I need. Absolutely. And if you could put your yes, email yes. in the chat window, then you know we'll be able to send you the recording. Yeah, I, I am okay. going to uh, do another thing is uh, show you where you can find all the uh, the various published uh, the assets that we have today. Are you seeing my screen? Yeah, I'm seeing it. So if you if you when you go to tmforum.org, right? This is the collabor this is where you join the project, right? You go to collaborative R and D, join a project, and then you click on whichever project, data analytics or customer experience or metrics. That's for joining the project. To see assets, you hover over the standards and adoption, and then okay. you can go into customer experience management, data analytics, metrics, any one of them, and you'll be able mm -hmm. to see all of the uh, published documents that we have. And there's a lot of documents, like I explained. Once you have the recording of, of my presentation, you can do a match from each one of those documents that I showed to you vis visually, and you can go and identify them in here and, and read through them. You know, you'll find a lot of very good, useful information. Okay, I will uh, do that. Great.